never changes. What's going on Wastelanders? Draco Invictus here with a character build guide for the Wasteland Architect. That's right, the Commonwealth Contractor's here and he's fixing to raise the roof as soon as he builds it out of a pile of scrap. Now for many of you, you may not need a guide like this because you're very familiar with how the settlements work and, and what you need to do, but just in case there's someone new out there or you know what, maybe it's your fifth playthrough and you finally decided to get into settlements and it, you just don't know where to start. Well, this is what this guide is designed to do. I'm not going to go into any backstory for the character or anything like that. That's for you guys to figure out. Also, I'm not going to talk about factions at all. Okay, because factions aren't going to affect this character. You could go with the Minuteman. Obviously, they use a lot of settlements. The Railroad definitely uses settlements. Now, the Brotherhood and the Institute, not so much on the settlement front, but you could certainly go with those factions if that's a decision you wanted to make because this is all about settlement building. Now, let me tell you, this is a viable character. This will get you to the end game with this build. Except you're going to have some killer settlements behind you at the end of the game. So let's jump right in and take a look at the starting stats for the Wasteland Architect. He's going to enter the Commonwealth with a 4 in Strength, 2 Perception, 1 Endurance, 9 Charisma, 8 Intelligence, 2 Agility, and 2 Luck. Now I went for a 9 in Charisma even though we're only going to need 6 points to get to Local Leader. But you can buy better and sell better with a higher charisma so I went with a higher charisma build for this character because that's also going to help us with the number of settlers that we can squeeze into our settlement so if you wanted to take a point out of charisma and, and because you wanted to be a heavy gunner you could certainly do that and put the point over into strength and pick up heavy gunner at level five or perhaps maybe you felt like you needed more health points so you could put an extra point into endurance or something like that there is that flexibility within the system now for my build I went ahead with the nine charisma because that's going to give me the largest settlements as far as settler size uh, I'm going to get better pricing when I go to buy things I'll be able to sell things for more so that's why I went with a nine charisma for that now these starting stats are based on a 28 point build after you pick up the special book in sanctuary and the perception bobblehead that's behind Preston Garvey at the Museum of Freedom and Concord then you're looking at your 30 point build I went ahead obviously Obviously, the perception bobblehead is going to add one to our perception, but I went ahead and used the special book on perception too, and we'll get to that once we get into the perk chart. So after picking up the perception bobblehead and the special book in Sanctuary, our stats are now four strength, four perception, one endurance, nine charisma, eight intelligence, two agility, and two luck. Before we jump into the perk tree, there's a couple things that we need to talk to that are vitally important to this game your armor, and your weapons. Now, this build went in a lot of different directions, and I found it very difficult, and I had to limit... Okay, I didn't have to limit shit. If you want to wear ultralight leather armor, you knock yourself out. Heavy combat armor, the new robot armor from the Automatron DLC. If you want to strut your ass through the Commonwealth wearing power armor all damn game, it's going to be okay. We're taking Scrounger, which means that you're going to find more fusion cores out in the world, which means that you'll be have a better chance of staying in your power armor the entire game. We're also taking armor all the way up to level 4. That means that any modifications that you want to make is totally cool. If you want to dress as the general and wear the general's outfit with the Minutemen, that's fine. If you want to go undercover in a red sequin dress with ballistic weave for the railroad, totally cool. You're your synth armor if you're with the institute your brother's steel armor if you're with the brotherhood of steel all fully upgradable don't worry about a thing your weapons if you want to be a gunslinger a commando a rifleman a heavy hitter a melee specialist 
all totally fine. The only caveat is Heavy Gunner. Heavy Gunner is rank 5 under the Strength Tree. That means that you're going to have to take a point from your Charisma and put it into your Strength so that you can take Heavy Gunner. But in the perk chart, I've laid out every point that you're going to need to take your specialty for your weapon. So you don't have to worry about a thing I got you taken care of. Trust me. This build guide is going to take us through the first 50 levels of gameplay, and anything after that is up to you. Since we enter the Commonwealth at level 1, no perk for you. Being alive is your perk for this level. At level 2, we're going to get our money machine started with the first rank of Fortune Finder. This will allow you to find caps and more containers throughout the Commonwealth. So stop and check every desk, filing cabinet, cigarette machine, and body you drop. Every container could be your next gold mine. Okay, maybe not gold mine, but the more caps you find, the easier your life will be. It all adds up. At level 3, we're going to take the first rank of Scrounger. Scrounger is the fortune finder of ammo. Matter of fact, all those containers where you're now finding extra caps most likely have extra ammo in them too. With patch 1.4, they added even more ammo types to the perk, which means whatever weapon you're using, you're going to be finding more ammo for it. And for the ammo you don't need... Well, since ammo is weightless, unless you're playing the new survival mode, it's as good as caps for bartering. Some rarer ammo types are worth a few more caps apiece, so let's stock up and save. Level 4, we picked the first rank of Cap Collector. You've mastered the art of the deal. Buying and selling prices at vendors are better. 10% better, in fact. This is a required perk for setting up stalls, which we can't do just yet, but the 10% discount to buying and selling can certainly help us out right now. At level 5, we get to pick the second rank of Fortune Finder, which will allow us to find even more caps and containers throughout the Commonwealth. Level 6 brings the first rank of Local Leader. As we start branching out to more settlements, this perk is invaluable as we're able to set up supply lines between our settlements, allowing us to share workbench inventory between the settlements. That also includes like uh, purified water and food. So if you're setting up at, say, mm, I don't know, the Boston Airport, where you can't put any water or food, then those settlers, if you set up a supply line, will be getting their food and water from your other settlements. At level 7, we pick up the second level of Scrounger, which allows you even more ammo and containers. And at level 8, we're going to get our first weapon specialization perk. For this build, I'm taking Rifleman, but feel free to take the weapon specialization of your choice. No matter the choice, this first rank will give us 20% more damage with our weapon style of choice. At level 9, we're going to be taking the first rank of Locksmith. Through my research, I found that there are way more locks to be picked than terminals to be hacked. Some are around a 70-30 split. If we only have the opportunity to take one of these, then I'm going to take Locksmith. Because we only get XP for the locks we pick or terminals we hack, so I don't want to give up all that extra XP. There are companions that can help us with terminals. Besides, I found that there is more likely a password for a terminal laying around somewhere than there is a key to open a lock. At the first rank, we can now open Novice and Advanced Locks. With all that being said, at level 10, we're going to take the first rank of Hacker. The reason for this is strictly for the settlement building aspect. We need to unlock Hacker so that we can use the terminals found in the build mode for lighting and turrets. This is the only rank of Hacker that I will be taking for this build. Rank 11 gets us the first rank of Gun Nut, so we can start modifying our weapons with base and rank 1 mods. And at level 12... We're going to take the first rank of armor, which will allow us to modify our armor pieces with base and rank 1 modifications. At level 13, let's take the first rank of blacksmith. Let's fire up the forge and gain access to base level and rank 1 melee weapon mods. When we start building robots, this will also come in handy for any melee weapons that we want to put on them. Level 14, we pick up the second and final rank of local leader. This will allow us to start making money from our settlements as we're going to be able to set up vendor stalls and work stations. Not to mention that now we're going to have more vendors to sell our crap to. Level 15 brings us the first rank of science. We're going to take full advantage of advanced technology with access to base level and rank 1 high-tech mods. This will also allow us to build laser turrets and disco balls in our settlements, as well as it's going to help us when we get into creating and modifying robots. At level 16, we're going to take the first rank of Medic. This is the only rank that we're going to be taking for this build. 
We're taking this so that we can set up medical stalls in our settlements, and it does give the added benefit of stim packs restoring 40% of lost health and right away removing 40% of radiation, so that is always nice. At level 17, we're taking the first rank of Robotics Expert. This is a crucial perk for the Automatron DLC to work with robots, but it also allows us to hack a robot and gain a chance to power it on or off, or initiate a self-destruct, even in combat. At level 18, we take the first rank of Scrapper, which you can salvage uncommon components like screws, aluminum, and copper when scrapping weapons and armor. More building materials. Woohoo! At level 19, we're going to take the second rank of either Locksmith or Hacker, whichever your choice. Of course, I went with Locksmith for this, which is going to give us a shot to crack expert level locks or terminals. At level 20, we pick up the second rank of our weapon specialization, which among other things grants us a 40% damage boost with our weapon style of choice. Level 21 brings us the second rank of cap collector, which means we get even bigger discounts when we're buying or selling. It actually calculates out to about a 32% discount between the first two ranks. At level 22, we take the second rank of science, which is going to give us all the second rank of high-tech mods, which is great for some of your weapon mods that also require science for that, so keep that in mind. Level 23, and we're taking the second rank of robotics expert. When you successfully hack a robot, you can incite it to attack. Not to mention allow for greater customization of your robot building station. It's great when you hack a robot, and then you have it turn on all of its buddies. Oh, <laughs> Now that's fucking glorious right there. All right, at level 24, we're taking the second and final rank of Scrapper. You're going to salvage rare components like circuitry, nuclear material, and fiber optics when scrapping weapons and armor. Items with favorited components are highlighted in the world. That's pretty damn cool. At level 25, we're taking the third rank of Scrounger, which will allow us to find even more ammo in containers. And at level 26, we're taking the third rank of Fortune Finder. Now even more caps are to be found scattered around the Commonwealth. At level 27, we're taking the second rank of Armor. This will give us access to all the rank 2 armor mods. And at level 28, we're taking the second rank of Gun Nut, which gives us access to rank 2 of all their gun mods. When we hit level 29, we're going to take the third rank of Locksmith or Hacker. This is the highest rank we should be taking going forth uh, for either of these perks, as I feel the fourth ranks are not needed and that the perk point would be better spent in other places. Pretty much like anything else. Well, except maybe vans. Okay, not maybe, definitely not vans. That is the dumbest perk, and it's just so damn stupid. This will allow us to unlock or bypass master level locks or terminals. At level 30, we're taking the third rank of Gun Nut to further our gun modification desires with rank 3 mods. At level 31, brings us our third rank of our weapon specialization. 60% more damage with various other benefits depending on your specialization of choice. Now when I say that, some of them offer like crippling limbs or disarming opponents. It, it, it all depends on what the specialization is. Look it up in the perk chart. It'll tell you. You'll know. I mean, if you plan on doing Commando, then you're going to know what all the levels do. But yeah, so that's why I mentioned it that way. Level 32 brings us the third rank of science, allowing for us even greater freedom with our high-tech mods. At level 33, we pick up the second rank of Blacksmith, allowing for the second rank of melee mods in the Forge. At level 34, and we're taking the third rank of armor to continue beefing up our armor with rank 3 modifications. At level 35, we're grabbing Blacksmith Rank 3 to apply even more skull-crushing mods to our melee weapons and that of our robot friends. Level 36, and we're taking the fourth rank of our weapon specialization, allowing for an 80% bonus to our damage, with added benefits, depending on the specialization. At level 37, we're taking the fourth and final rank of Scrounger. And as the description says, you'll find even more ammo in containers. Level 38 is a player choice perk. As we're approaching the final levels for our primary and secondary perks, we have the ability to take a moment to make our Wasteland Architect unique to us. At level 39, we're taking the final rank in armor. Now there's nothing we can't modify in the armor bench as we gain access to level 4 armor mods. And level 40 brings us to the fourth and final rank of Fortune Finder. Now, not only are we going to find even more caps and containers, there's a chance that when you kill an enemy, they explode into a shower of caps. Glorious. 
At level 41, we're taking the final rank of Cap Collector, which will allow us to invest 500 caps into any vendor, and it will permanently increase their caps at their disposal. This works great for vendors in our settlements, as you only need to invest in a single type of store, and that same type gets the upgrade throughout all your settlements. What this means is you'll only need to invest 3,000 caps in your stores. Since there are only six types of stores, and every single store in your settlements will permanently have more caps, now we're making some money. Level 42 brings us the fourth rank of science, so now we have access to the entire arsenal of high-tech mods. At level 43, there is no mod we can't build for a ballistic or energy weapon when we take the final rank of gun nut. With the final rank of robotics expert at level 44, we can now issue commands to any robot we hack out in the commonwealth. Level 45 gives us another player choice perk. Explore the different perks and find something that offers some more variety, better role playing fun, or something that's just gonna help you out. Level 46 brings us the final rank of our weapon specialization, except for Commando. You're gonna have to wait for level 49 for that one. Now we're gonna do double damage with our weapon of choice. Level 47 and 48 are player choice levels to further differentiate your character from the template. At level 49, if you're taking the Commando Specialization, now's your chance to gain the final rank for that perk. And at level 50, you'll have another choice for your player choice perks. There you have it, Wastelanders, the Wasteland Architect. Your endgame stats, if you gathered all the bobbleheads, but without equipment enhancements, will look like this. 5 Strength, 4 Perception, 2 Endurance, 10 Charisma, 9 Intelligence, 3 Agility, and 3 Luck. Of course, this is my vision for the Wasteland Architect. Yours could be different. Like, I didn't take Strong Back or Lone Wanderer, since there are much better ways of lugging all your junk around the Commonwealth. Matter of fact, check out my video for carrying the Commonwealth here for more information. If you like this build guide, let me know by clicking the like button down below. If you have any questions, comments, kicks, or complaints, leave them down in the comment section. Join me on Twitter for great conversation with an awesome growing community at Draco underscore Invictus. You can also check out my Facebook page, which offers all my videos from YouTube and original tweets from Twitter. You can find me at Facebook.com forward slash the Draco Invictus. Until next time, Wastelanders, take care of yourselves out there. This is Draco Invictus saying, see ya.